afternoon. Um, my name is Soya Drexler. I'm a 2D supervisor at MPC LA. And today I'm here to talk to you about our commercial BMW legend. So if you've talked to me before about big VFX jobs, you might have come across some quotes like, the deadline was crazy, the resources were crazy, and in severe cases also, the clients were crazy. <laughs> Though, I mean, I backdated that. That's, my clients now are very lovely and amazing. Um, in this case, however, I can really not say any of these things. There was no humongous pile of problems that we were up against. There was months of, you know, hard work, but we had months which is really long in a time frame that we usually have. Um, there was no client feedback that made our lives unnecessarily hard. So instead of talking to you about how we defeated the odds that were stacked up against us, I kind of want to talk about how the use of Nuke and Nuke Studio allowed us to push ourselves and the creative further than anybody actually asked of us. And how our internal reviews and working with our global offices um, allowed us to form the creative. And also how the variety of work in advertising is making me so, so excited because it's a new challenge every day. So right now I'm going to play you our ad. Have you heard the legend of old McClendon, who battled the bulls of the bank single-handed? Then evaded the waves that Poseidon had summoned, and wrangled the gangs of the docks by the dozen. And yea, old McClendon beat Roy the Destroyer outwitted the genius and his fiendish lawyer. And outraced the rogues around Razorback Ridge, and the trolls who dug holes under Barnaby Bridge. McClendon braved roadways where most men won't wander to rescue the runaways from the headmaster's monster. I sure would have loved to see her that fine hour and perhaps catch a glimpse of the source of her power. Make every day legendary. Cool, so as a Bavarian, this is close to my heart. <laughs> so this ad was entirely comped in Nuke and delivered out of Nuke Studio from conform to delivery. And uh, that's pretty exciting. I used to be a flame up and transitioned into Nuke Studio over the past five years. And now I lead all of my jobs in Nuke Studio. And um, it makes me really happy to see that globally right now, we are delivering a lot of huge VX, VFX jobs out of Nuke Studio, not only because it means that it's possible, but because it means that our tools and our pipeline is actually evolving to let the artists choose their medium for the best creative output. So I did a little researching, and our brand new showreel that dropped about two weeks ago has 50% of its work done in Nuke Studio. All right, so let's get back to BMW. Um, when I started on this show, others had already spent weeks on previs and calculations. Our creative director, Michael Gregory, and CG supervisor, Dan Thedden, had gone to South Africa on set, and thousands of reference stills and LiDAR scans had been collected. Um, which is very, very helpful because they helped us previous the Roy the Destroyer sequence to a point where when the plates hit me, it was actually very easy to comp those green screen plates in because all of those calculations were actually correct and he just fit right in there. Um, there were a few unexpected challenges, as there always are. Um, when they went to Tech Scout, they went into this dockyard and there were two very beautiful grungy boats there but by the time they got there to shoot the ad, one of the boats was missing, um, and the other one had been completely repainted and looked nothing like it did before. So what we had to do is replace the one on the left in CG that we luckily could do because they collected all of those reference stills from Tech Scout, um, and the other one we retextured it in Nuke. The other challenge that we didn't really expect was that a lot of this ad was shot with the wrong hero car which we found out very shortly before delivery. Um, 
Overall, though, I think the biggest challenges in this ad we brought upon ourselves. Like, we looked at this plate and we thought to ourselves, this is cool and it's going to look amazing when it's full of bankers all the way to the back. But what if we actually widened the street to be twice as wide as it is right now? Wouldn't that be way more scary? So we did a test, we reprojected everything, and we realized, yeah, that would be way more scary and also a lot more work. Um, because it meant reprojecting, DMPing, and tracking several other shots in the sequence that were otherwise ready for delivery. But we did it, and I think it's actually much better for the outcome. So I think overall, our approach in this, and whenever we have enough time to do that, is to ask ourselves, what if? You know, what if the VFX that we're adding were actually really there in the plate? Wouldn't the camera angles be slightly different to frame what isn't there on set currently? What if we had the possibility to still change everything in post? Wouldn't we want to do that? And you know, in most cases, the answer is yes. And then we you know, bite our teeth and do it. Um, so this is an example where we changed the camera move to actually frame the car and the bikers and show our destruction sequence. We watched each one of these shots hundreds of times, so every little detail for us made a huge difference. Um, in this case, you know, we were wondering if this huge guy Poseidon was holding a tool, wouldn't it be slightly heavier than the one we have on set? And I know the difference doesn't really show up that crazy, but when you see it in the edit, it moves very, very slightly different, so we time warped that plate. Um, we also found out that most of our water looked much better in direct sunlight. So some of the plates we decided to absolutely relight, create those pockets of light to allow for the water to be actually beauty lit. And we changed the backgrounds to what we thought the CG would, should look like. And we also realized that water looks much more interesting when it rushes over things. So we heightened the sidewalks on all of our shots so that the water would have better interaction. Speaking of the water, we wondered, wouldn't it be a little bit more interesting if we in addition to a sprinkler water, dropped a huge tank full of water behind it so that we had more uh, opportunity to choose where or how that water was going to hit the car and more creative license to design a wave that was actually scary looking. And this was just 15 seconds of this ad. There's a whole other minute of what ifs and eventually why nots that we came across. So I feel like in this one, it wasn't like we were presented with a problem looking for solutions, which is the case very often in advertising. We were presented with potential beautifully lit plates, amazing, amazing footage, uh, looking for us to create our own challenges and then solve them. So the way that we did that is collecting reference like crazy. We have folders and folders full in our office uh, of reference that might be, you know, crow flight patterns or the way that water swirls when a dam breaks. Um, and everybody from our creative director to our artists collected these. And I think what's important to me about this is it was so easy to pull all of this reference into Nuke Studio, have review sessions with the client, you know, don't care about the color space or the file format, and then just collect all of these things, pop it into a Nuke script, and send it off to my artists. Um, so I love how close I'm actually working together with people because it is still the same software. So afterwards, we moved into concept stage, and this is just very early blocking out where things might be, um, taking the Bavarian approach here. Uh, but you know that can show you how different we could have gone in the worlds that we were creating here. Um, eventually, we got to this stage, and we sent it off to Dante, our director, and he really liked it. So um, seeing this in comparison to the final outcome, it's pretty close, and we used that to build our whole environment. I'm also personally a fan of going too far and then stripping it back. Uh, like when I decided to create a more magical portal behind our lawyer in the sequence. Um, seemed like a good idea, but when we went into effects, we realized that was way too distracting for a character that has two shots in this ad. So we took it back out, but it was interesting. Um, so therefore, my favorite tool in Nuke Studio, even though it's old, um, but still my favorite, is the versions tool. So to be able to step through all the versions and see the progress that you've made or the progress that you might be missing um, is very, very exciting, especially if you have long daily review sessions like we did. Um, 
So you can step back in time, and that's not just in comps, but also in lighting, snap comps, and effects comps. Have everything on the timeline and just compare, distract, and like be sure whose elements are working out, whose elements still need work. Um, cool. We had eight different vignettes in this ad, and it looked a little bit to us like it was eight tiny separate ads. For that, we needed a lot of power, so we had 140 artists in five different countries work on this at the same time. Um, that means that my job, personally, in Nuke Studio was to hold it all together. Every morning when you wake up, you wake up to hundreds of new versions coming in that you all have to review, organize, assess, make sure that everybody has any elements and references they might need, jump on daily calls with all the different time zones, um, keep everyone's excitement going. Uh, and I think that the 7,836 logged versions across all disciplines in F-Track kind of show our excitement for this ad and give constant feedback. Um, and the way that we give feedback is <laughs> very beautiful. Um, basically, it's jumping as a new, grabbing everything out of Nuke Studio that we need, um, draw colorful arrows, um, and then jump on some calls and describe what we want to do. So I'm going to show you the breakdowns for this ad. So uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.